These are $2,000 winners John and Lorraine Burns. Yesterday, when we ran out of time, they were competing with dress designer Lucille Rivers and zoo curator Carl Koffeld for a salary of $500 a day on Who Do You Trust? Most of us were brought up to understand the importance of trust. But unfortunately, we live today in an age where levels of trust throughout society are actually at historic lows. So could this erosion of trust be a danger to your retirement goals? Well, sadly, it's possible. It's that time again, time to tune out the hype and focus on the facts. Facts that matter to you, the income generation. Let's get started. Get ready to separate reality from myth. With us, David Scranton. David Scranton. David Scranton. No. David Scranton. But David Scranton says, hey, not so fast. How does it affect the markets? How does it affect the economy? Thanks to efficiencies in new technology and a staff of veteran analysts and portfolio managers, Sound Income Strategy strives to set new standards and bring institutional style investing to your portfolio. This issue of trust is one that we've examined in different ways before here on the income generation. However, it's a critical issue when it comes to retirement planning, and it's a timely one for many reasons. Distrust of politicians and the media, for example, are a constant source of division and debate for most Americans. This mood of mistrust has spread far beyond politics and the media. In fact, research shows that Americans are more cynical and distrustful of just about everything nowadays. In some regards, this erosion of trust is understandable, and to a certain degree, even healthy. However, it also has the potential to become quite unhealthy and even dangerous when it comes to making key life decisions where trust plays a vital role. That, of course, includes financial decisions, as we'll talk about on today's show. And joining us will be Robert Kiyosaki, author of the best-selling book, Fake. Fake money, fake teachers, fake assets, how lies are making the poor and middle class poor. Along with Jeff Small, founder of Arbor Financial Services and also the brand ambassador of the Retirement Income Store. He's Amazon best-selling author of the book, Turning Financial Planning Right Side Up. And he's also a frequent guest host of this very show, The Income Generation. First, let's talk more about the overall erosion of trust in modern American society. 39 days, 18 people, one survivor. The reality show Survivor has been a hit now for nearly 20 years. If you've ever watched the show, you know that trust plays a crucial role in how contestants play the game. Determining which fellow contestants are telling the truth and which ones are intentionally trying to mislead you is an ongoing challenge in Survivor. A perceived ally might really be an enemy, and vice versa. There's a lot of manipulation, a lot of backstabbing in the game of Survivor, and contestants frequently use or abuse trust as a strategic tool. Whether the show's popularity has anything to do with the overall erosion of trust in American society in the last several decades is indeed debatable. But the erosion itself is not. A recent study by the Pew Research Center found that fewer Americans agree with the statement, most people can be trusted than any time in the past 40 years. The study also found that people around the world are increasingly distrustful of those in leadership roles, particularly in government. Specifically, a full three quarters of Americans agree that society's trust in the federal government has been shrinking, and 64% believe the same thing about our trust in one another. When asked a separate question about why trust has declined in the last 20 years or so, people offered a huge variety of reasons. Those who agree that trust in elected officials has plummeted cite the government's performance as a major reason. And many other cite concerns about how money has corrupted government and how corporations control the political process. Those who think interpersonal trust has declined have also offered a wide array of possible causes, including a sense that Americans on the whole have become lazier, greedier, and more dishonest. Overall, 49% of adults think interpersonal trust has declined because people are less reliable than they used to be. Some people also said they see a connection between poor government performance caused by increased partisan and gridlock and a decline in civility and trustworthiness 
amongst their fellow citizens. We'll talk more about some of the causes behind the erosion of this trust in America coming up in just a bit. But first, let's review a few more key findings from the Pew Research study. Nearly two-thirds of those surveyed said they believe low trust in the federal government makes it harder to solve many of the country's problems, including everything from immigration and border issues to health care, race-related issues, and gun violence. When asked to explain why, respondents pointed out that problems such as these cannot be solved when citizens have no faith or trust in the solutions proposed to them or the officials proposing those solutions. This actually gets to the very core of how a lack of trust can be so dangerous and so damaging. That's true not only on a societal level, but on a personal level as well. In addition to the erosion of trust in government and one another, research also shows that Americans are increasingly mistrusting of big corporations and major institutions such as banks, which is really no surprise barely 10 years after the financial crisis. For many, this mistrust of banks has spilled over into other areas of the financial industry, including financial services, which encompasses brokers, accountants, insurance companies, financial advisors, and much more. So not surprisingly, research also shows that a majority of Americans today are highly mistrustful of technology and the media based upon their evolution together over the last 20 years. So how could that not be the case in an age when fake news is a constant source of debate and division? We'll talk more about that and other causes behind this erosion of trust and what can be done about them coming up in just a bit. David J. Scranton's groundbreaking new book, The Retirement Income Story, will revolutionize the way baby boomers and their advisors plan and save for retirement. The Retirement Income Story, the story behind the launch of the Retirement Income Store, is about to shatter many of the myths Wall Street bankers have promoted and protected for decades. David outlines what he believes to be a much better method for planning and saving for retirement, one that doesn't involve taking on more stock market risk. In fact, most will be able to reduce and or possibly even eliminate stock market risk while creating renewable streams of income they can count on well into their retirement years. The simple truth is that if you were born in 1968 or sooner, you can't afford to write out another catastrophic stock market drop like the ones in 2000 and 2007. Read the Retirement Income Story and revolutionize the way you plan and save for retirement. And right now, let's welcome our first guest, businessman and author, Robert Kiyosaki. He's the founder of Rich Global LLC and the Rich Dad Company. He's also author of the new book, Fake. Fake money, fake teachers, fake assets, how lies are making the poor and middle class poorer. Robert, thanks for joining us here again on The Income Generation. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak about my favorite subject, fake. <laughs> Your favorite subject, that's thank right. So obviously, you wrote the book in many ways because you yourself recognize that there is a mistrust that a lot of people have uh, for the media, for the government, for other sources. Uh, why do you think that is? Why do you think that's grown so much over the last few years? I don't know. And it's, it's, it's really topical. It's, I, I have this uh, the latest economist in right here. And then in here, it talks about policing propaganda. So give me a really long answer to a short question. When I was a kid, there was only one television station. Today, there's what, 50 million? Everybody's got a YouTube channel and all this stuff. There's so much information going out now. And this article here from The Economist talks about how Elizabeth Warren took out an ad saying that Zuckerberg endorsed Trump. <laughs> it got through, you know? And uh, so even, even The Economist says here, it says that all... It's just that it's just this whole internet thing is nothing but a pack of lies. So it's really important we understand who we're getting information from. Do we trust them or not trust them? Well, it's interesting. It's interesting because your whole story about your rich dad versus your poor dad, you know, your rich dad had a healthy distrust even back then of the system in general and what we're taught in our schools as to how to be successful versus how to be unsuccessful. And at the end of the day, it was that rich dad's distrust that really shaped much of what you've done over the course of your lifetime, has it not? Correct. 
Well, my, my rich dad was a man who never went to school. He was one of these guys who was kind of like, just he was a natural entrepreneur is what he was. And then my poor dad was the head of education for the state of Hawaii, you know, a PhD. And so the, the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, is a juxtaposition about what a rich man you know, tells their kids versus a academic tells their kids. They're not the same thing. And today we have this growing gap between the rich and everybody else. And a lot of it stems from the fact that we have no financial education in our schools. So that's that's why I wrote the book. Okay. So let's I want to get to the schools, but let's take the first step. The media. Um, how can our income generation members that are watching you right now, watching the show, how they can watch or listen to a certain media source and determine whether they can trust that source or not? Well, that's probably the, the $25 million question or whatever you say it. You know, one of the reasons I like YouTube and all this versus what I would say is CNBC or ABC or you know, all those guys is on YouTube, I get to listen to people I want to listen to. Whether I agree with them or not, I'll listen to them for like 10, 20, 30 minutes. Where if I'm on national television, I get four minutes. If I'm in the paper, I don't trust a reporter because as a person does many interviews, I'll say something to a journalist, a, a print reporter, and they'll completely twist it. Right, so at least here you, you're, you're hearing me say what I say and your viewers can hear and see me saying what I say. But when it's in like the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal, you don't know if the reporter has their own bias in it. And that's the challenge. Yeah. And of course, they all do have biases. I mean, as human beings, we all have biases. And then, of course, when we're a reporter for a certain organization, now we have the pressure of those organizational biases, too, on our shoulders. So if you stay with us for a minute, Robert, I'd really appreciate it. We need to take a break. You stay with us also. We'll be back here in a moment coming up in the income generation. We'll be right back with Robert Kiyosaki. Financial experts have predicted that the next major recession could happen as early as this year. What would you do if it took half of your retirement savings with it? I'm David Scranton, founder of Sound Income Strategies, and there is a safer way, investing for income. By focusing primarily on non-stock market income generating investments, you could significantly reduce the impacts of the next major recession. Visit the Retirement Income Store at soundincomestrategies.com to connect with an income specialist who can help you get started to an income-based retirement plan. The road to retirement is filled with twists and turns, and life's unexpected detours could easily throw you off course. That's why it's essential to work with a financial advisor who is also a fiduciary. A fiduciary experienced in helping clients navigate the complexities of retirement planning while helping you pay yourself first. The road to retirement now made simple. To learn more, visit the retirementincomestore.com. Another interesting aspect of the erosion of trust in America is that it has continued despite an economic turnaround. Historically, declining trust in society is at least partially linked to economic hardship. The financial crisis and Great Recession certainly helped to fuel mistrust in the government, in banks, and other areas of the financial industry. But the financial crisis occurred 10 years ago. Since that time, the U.S. economy has steadily improved, making huge leaps forward in many areas since President Trump's election. So why hasn't trust improved as well? Well, one obvious answer is that as the economy has improved, the spread of conflicting, misleading, and outright false information in the ever-widening electronic media has gotten worse. In short, it's gotten much harder to determine what is and isn't true and where the boundaries lie between fact, opinion, and good old misinformation. According to the marketing and communications firm Edelman, only 42% of Americans recently surveyed said they trust the media, compared to nearly 50% only a year ago. The company, which has been surveying people around the world about their levels of trust in various institutions for 18 years now, said it has never before recorded such steep drops in trust in the United States. 
The root cause of the decline, according to the firm's head, Richard Edelman, is a lack of objective facts and rational discourse. This linked mainly to the spread of biased news outlets and social media. Edelman also stressed that this is not just an American issue, but actually a global one. Eroding trust in the media is central to eroding trust overall because, as Edelman put it, if you don't have an agreed upon set of facts, then it's really hard to judge whether a prime minister, a president, or a company is really good or bad, honest or dishonest, trusty or untrustworthy. As noted earlier, a certain level of healthy skepticism and mistrust is actually a good thing. After all, there really are some dishonest, untrustworthy people out there, and we need to be aware of that in order to protect ourselves. However, at the end of the day, we also frequently need to put our trust in certain people and institutions in order to get by, whether that means a doctor when you're sick or a mechanic when your car breaks down. In fact, just like in the game of Survivor, we really couldn't survive without trust, not as a society, not as individuals. So I would argue we all have a two-fold challenge in this age where trust is eroding everywhere you look. One, to not let mistrust become a danger in your own life. And two, to be more diligent than ever about determining who and what you really can trust. So how can you do that? Well, the first step is to acknowledge those areas in your life where trust is essential. I've already given a couple of examples. If you're not a mechanic, you obviously need to trust one to fix your car. If you're not a doctor, you're probably better off trusting one to remove your appendix rather than trying to do that yourself. Of course, if you're a regular viewer, you know I believe one of the most important trust relationships you'll ever have is with your financial advisor. And that one of the keys to achieving your retirement goals lies in finding the right advisor. That means an advisor you can trust to protect your hard-earned money and to always act in your best interest. So how do you find that advisor and establish that trust in this age of mistrust and misinformation? We'll talk more about that coming up in just a bit. Right now, it's Welcome Back Businessman and author Robert Kiyosaki. Robert, thanks so much for sticking around. Thank you. Hey, Thank you very much. So I hadn't heard anybody really talk about watching YouTube and the reason for it quite the way you did, but it makes a lot of sense to me. But let's say for some reason, I'm not a computer person. I'm not going to watch YouTube, all right? Um, at bare minimum, it sounds like, if I can read your mind for a moment, it sounds like gosh, you know, if I'm going to watch Fox News, I also should watch CNN and, and MSNBC to get opposing views so that by getting all the information, I can then decide what makes sense for me. At bare minimum, would you agree with that? Exactly. I mean, what you want is the, especially the view you don't agree with, you know, because then you have a complete view. Too many people just want to listen to the person they like or agree with versus listen to the person who is contrarian to their point of view. That's the difference. That's true. We all want to hear what we want to hear. So, oh, this, this, guy, this guy sounds like me, what, you know, what I say to myself in my own head when nobody's paying attention. So I'm going to watch him. But you don't grow. You don't expand that way. Uh, much like, and I know you loved your poor dad, but much like your poor dad never really got to expand because he got into the world of academia and the way he's taught to do it the right way. And those are the blinders that... He went through life wearing, essentially, correct? Right, correct, exactly. And you, and you know, today, what's happening to young people, I can't believe what they're being taught in school. You know, they have these safety zones and you, you can't hurt their feelings. You know, the snowflake generation. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Vietnam era Marine. You know, you, hurting my feelings was where you started. <laughs> uh, I was just interviewing somebody the other day to work here in the office. And, you know, we're pretty fast paced. So I was worried about people who are overly thin skinned. And I looked at her resume. She seemed really quiet, really shy. When I looked at her resume, though, and she had been in the military for four years, I immediately thought, oh, I don't have to worry about that. If you can make it through basic training through four years in the military, you've got to be able to do something right, especially if you make it through Vietnam, for goodness sake. So, so all right, you talk about how um, 
what we're learning today in schools is helping really make the poor and the middle class even poorer. Tell us about that and why. Right, that's why I wrote my book, Fake, you know, Fake Money, Fake Teachers, and Fake Assets. You gotta be careful who your teachers are and who defines your assets. There's this great book, I wanna, I, I like reading books, you know, I'm, I'm never a good student, but there's this great book called Capital, and it's up by this guy, Thomas Piketty. And it's, he's for the first time studied what causes the gap between the rich and everybody else. This is not a new phenomenon. So he goes into Malthus, Ricardo, and then Marx for the last, you know, 300 years or so. But it's very, very interesting. It comes down to it because your, your, your um, show is income generation. But what he starts with is what kind of income do you work for? So there's income from labor. And that's my rich dad said the rich don't work for money. And there's income from capital. So I'm a capitalist. My income does not come from my work. My income comes from my real estate, my stocks, my bonds, my uh, assets, my businesses, and my employees. So I'm a capitalist. But our schools teach us to be laborers, go to school to get a job. And if you know anything about taxes, the people, unfortunately, that work for money pay the highest taxes. And people that work for capital, income from capital, pay the least taxes. So when you, when you think about the net effect of not having to pay taxes, it affects your income in, 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 you know, immensely. So that's why this book here, Capital, is the first study on what causes the rich and the gap between the rich and the poor. And it's getting worse. That's my concern. And I've read your book, and I love it. I think everyone should read it. I really do mean that sincerely. It was funny. You talk about that. I was actually... Uh, with someone just a couple days ago, actually bought a 737. And his comment was, well, I got to write the whole thing off. Uh, and of course, that's because he's a business owner, he's an entrepreneur. So one minute left, one minute left, tell our income generation members who are close to retirement, who are trying to get ready, what they should do, in your opinion, to be best prepared for retirement. Well, the one thing I talk about in fake is I don't save money, I don't save the US dollar. And the dollar, the dollar is really strong. But since 1972, when I was flying in Vietnam, I started investing in gold and silver. And today I have millions in gold and silver. So today the biggest investment I see for asset protection is silver. Silver is at the lowest price in, uh, for 20 something years or something. So I always tell people that rather than saving the dollar, because the dollar is pretty corrupt right now. You know, they, just, they print it, the zero interest rate policy. I mean, why would you save dollars? So I would say I would just save silver right now till this whole thing blows over. So what you're saying is once you've satisfied your income needs from investments or from pensions and everything, then if you're looking for what you consider to be a safe haven with some growth potential, go to precious metals because it's not tied to the dollar or any fiat currency for that matter. So we need to leave it there for now. Robert, thanks so much for being back on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for always having me on your program. I appreciate it. You stay with us. We'll be back here with more right here on the Income Generation in just a moment. Many Americans base at least some of their savings and investment decisions on news and information they get through things such as financial programs, magazines, blogs, websites. But as we've discussed, with the explosion of media outlets over the past decade or so, it's become increasingly difficult to determine which programs, magazines, blogs, websites, are trustworthy or even credible within the industry. Of course, finding reliable, unbiased financial guidance and financial information has always been a challenge to some extent, even before cable TV and the internet. That's because the system works in such a way that much of the financial media is biased towards certain types of financial strategies and against others. If you're a regular viewer, you've heard me use the term Wall Street cheerleaders many times to describe a large portion of the financial media and some advisors. Just like a cheerleader who's obliged to keep cheering optimistically, whether her team is up by 20 points or down by 50, many financial media outlets feel a similar obligation to speak optimistically about the stock market as often as possible and regardless of economic realities. Again, there are a variety of reasons for this, 
And it doesn't mean that it's impossible to potentially find helpful or valuable information through the financial media. However, it does mean that it's probably not a good idea to make any major financial moves or decisions purely on that basis. It's important to dig deeper, to look further, and to discuss the information with a qualified objective financial advisor who can help you apply the information to your own individual situation. So how do you find the right advisor? One you know that you can trust to always act in your best interest? A good first step is to find out whether the advisor is a fiduciary or not. Why? Because some are fiduciaries and some are not, which is a fact many people don't realize. In fact, a recent study found that nearly half of Americans falsely believe that all financial advisors are legally required to act in their client's best interest. The reality is that only advisors who are fiduciaries are required by law to act in the best interest of their clients. According to the Cornell Law Dictionary, a fiduciary duty is the highest standard of care and requires always acting in your beneficiary's best interest, even if doing so is contrary to your own. For a financial advisor, this can mean recommending a product or strategy that results in reduced or maybe even no compensation. Why? Because it's the best option for the client. By contrast, advisors who are non-fiduciaries are held to what's called the suitability standard, a lower standard of care. And as I've explained before, the most common difference between a fiduciary and an advisor acting under the suitability standard is in the decision-making process. Before making any recommendation, fiduciaries undergo a strict process, a process designed to determine their client's best interest. Afterward, they discuss it with the client to make sure there's no misunderstanding about the recommendation or the fiduciary's rationale for making it. Still, trust remains a crucial ingredient in many life situations. Chief among those situations is creating a sound, reliable financial plan for retirement. It's one of the most important tasks you'll ever undertake, and it requires not only finding a qualified professional, but the right qualified professional, one you know that you can trust to always act in your best interest. A financial advisor who's a fiduciary is required by law to do exactly that and is held to the highest possible standard of accountability. Now, naturally, this doesn't mean that all advisors who aren't fiduciaries can't be trusted, but being aware of the difference between the fiduciary and suitability standards can give you a helpful guideline for finding the advisor who's right for you. And we'll talk more about this coming up in just a bit. After a certain age, you shouldn't be overexposed to stock market risk, yet you might still be trying to squeeze every last drop out of today's market. And although fixed income investment can offer less risk than stocks, it doesn't mean you have to sacrifice return. In fact, recently some fixed income investments have actually outperformed stocks, but yet you're still waiting to act. Visit the retirementincomestore.com today to regain control of your retirement. Now it's time to welcome our next guest, Jeff Small, president of Arbor Financial Services in Melbourne, Florida. He is best-selling author of the book, turning financial planning right side up. He's also brand ambassador for our very own retirement income store and a frequent guest host on this very show, The Income Generation. Jeff, thanks for taking the time to be here with us today. Hey, it's great to be here, David. Um, I appreciate you saying that. I know you don't really mean it, though, because I know you like it a lot better when you're sitting on my side of the desk interviewing other people versus being interviewed. But I need to know, what do you make of this whole topic about trust? Why is it that studies today seem to be showing that people have less and less trust for each other? They have less and less trust. The media is the easy part, but for, for virtually all types of institutions, uh, let's talk about that. What's your take on it? Well, I think that you know, trust, uh, the era of mistrust that we're living in is synonymous with the era of disrespect. And it really starts from the top, from leadership and government and various media platforms. We see a continued disinformation campaign. We see activism. Uh, we don't really see objectivity. And so people are smart enough to know today in the, you know, with the Internet age that basically that the truth uh, just isn't being told correctly and everybody has an agenda. And so we have to we have to get back to what I call a neutral or objective media presence to reestablish the connection or the belief in media because nobody believes in media today. Okay, fair enough. Now, 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 you said at the beginning, and you kind of threw me off with this, you said it's got to do uh, something to do with respect. And that's great, but it almost sounds like you're going a little soft on me, Jeff, like you're getting a little 
PC, a little politically correct. Uh, what do you mean by respect? Well, you know, there's continual disrespect from both political parties. Uh, misinformation by the news media is very disrespectful. The country's been divided, and so now we're living in this age of division. So I call it the era of, of no respect or disrespect because nobody respects each other. And certain groups politically and socially can't even look at each other or talk to each other the same way anymore because of what's happening from the top down. And it all begins with media and leaders in government. And are you noticing what I notice in politics, but it seemed like traditionally the conservatives were always blamed for being angry. And I think anger takes disrespect to a whole other level. You know, I can, you know, I can say to you, I think your ideas are stupid. Um, but when you're really, really angry about it, that, that's a whole other story. But it seems today that, you know, the liberal portions of our country tend to be more angry than anybody else. I mean, are you picking up on this also? You know, that's, that's, it's, it's almost like a virus where I find that Republicans can, can talk about open, openness and ideas and see cross-pollination and working together in unity. It's the Democrats that I see, even as the clients that I work with, if I tell them I vote a Republican, they'll walk right out the door and won't talk to me ever again. They just immediately label me. So we have to get back to respecting each other. And for some reason, the left is completely intolerable, and I see the right being significantly more tolerable and open-minded to working uh, with everybody, no matter what your persuasion is. So we've got to get rid of this, re this this respect. But the level of disrespect in the media is absolutely outrageous in terms of what happens, what they choose to promote. And th that's why ratings are dropping, and folks are looking for alternative media today. Radio shows, uh, off-brand uh, media media platforms are, are, are thriving because they want to get to the networks and people are cutting the cable. They're cutting the cable. You heard Robert Kiyosaki talking about even, uh, you know, YouTube. He loves YouTube because things he says cannot be taken out of context. You watch the entire YouTube video and you get the entirety of the essence of what somebody's trying to say. Um, so it's interesting because most people are really not extreme. Most people are more centrist. So many people I talk about that, that are, you know, maybe they're, they're socially a bit more uh, liberal, not necessarily completely liberal, but they're socially a bit more liberal, but they're fiscally conservative. But yet, in 30 seconds we have left, the politicians seem to be going to, to, to the polarities. And that's part of what's, what's really hurting this the most, is it not? Well, it really is. I mean, the political side of the equation is... is completely fractured, completely broken. I, I think the aliens have to land on the front lawn of the White House to pull everybody together. I mean, that's kind of where we are today. Yeah, yeah. And I wish somebody would just come to the center and, and be more rational. And I, you're right, it starts with respect. So thank you for clarifying that. There, your respect word makes a lot more sense. Jeff, stay with us. We need to take one of those breaks, as you well know. And you stay with us, too. We'll be back here with more from Jeff Small right here on the Income Generation in just a minute. scenes photos, retirement planning tips, and upcoming giveaways, follow the Income Generation Show on Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch video clips, guest interviews, and to catch up on past episodes. As we all know, for some jobs around the house, taking the do-it-yourselfer approach is fine. For other jobs, however, you take a big risk when trying to do it yourself rather than calling someone with the appropriate expertise. In those cases, you know you'll usually decrease your risk even further by calling the right person for the job, someone with the skills, credentials, and qualifications to do the job right, someone you can trust. As we've talked about, taking the time to find a professional you can trust remains important despite the overall erosion of trust we've seen throughout society in recent years. The Retirement Income Store was created to be such a resource to find these trusted professionals. Advisors aligned with the Retirement Income Store and sound income strategies are not only fiduciaries you could trust, but they're also highly qualified professionals who specialize in the financial needs of people who are retired or within 10 years of retirement. And that means people who have transitioned who, or who are transitioning for that matter from the growth and accumulation stage of retirement to the protection and income stage. If you're a regular viewer, 
You know, I believe making that transition is more important than ever in our current age of global economic uncertainty. As I've also explained, that's because with the investing for income model, increasing your retirement income actually results from reducing your investment risk, not increasing it as many falsely believe. Those people mistakenly think that growth and return are synonymous, when in fact total return is a sum of both growth, which is capital appreciation, and income, which comes in the form of interest and dividends. That's why once you've shifted your strategic focus from growth to income, protecting your principal from the risks of spend down and market volatility becomes your number one priority. You need secure principal to generate reliable income through interest and dividends. That's income you can count on to meet your needs and goals. Or if you don't need it, that you can reinvest to grow your portfolio organically. The Retirement Income Store is a resource to help you find the right advisor in your area, no matter where you live. That means an advisor you can really trust to put your interest first, both as a fiduciary and as a specialist who understands the challenges facing today's generation of retirees and near retirees. That is the income generation. Now it's time to welcome back Jeff Small, president of Arbor Financial Services in Melbourne, Florida, and brand ambassador of our very own retirement income store. Jeff, thanks for sticking around. Thank you, David. So I remember the conversation we had not too long ago when I approached you over the telephone and I said, I need a favor. Um, I really would love you to be brand ambassador for the retirement income store. And you didn't hesitate for a second. You jumped right up and yes, I'm 100%, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, uh, and, and loved it. So you're the perfect person for me to ask this question to then. Why can our income generation viewers, why, how can they be confident that when they're talking to a franchisee of the retirement income store, like you, like me, like any of the others, how can they know that they can trust that that person is the right person to help them if they're retired or within 10 years of retirement? Well, I think that uh, the, the number one reason, of course, is because all the advisors uh, in, inside the retirement income store distribution channel are fiduciaries or they're affiliated with fiduciary. And so they've got a legal obligation to really always put the client first, use a client-centric approach. But the other reason is because we're full service. We have the option to recommend any product or any program or any investment in the, in the marketplace today. Um, but what we want to do is really tailor something that's financially and legally correct. And the retirement income store does that because it shows retirees how to, and pre-retirees, how to maximize their income. When the entire industry and financial services uh, completely ignores the creation of income. And so when we show our, our potential clients these differences, the epiphany comes into play and it's, it, it, the trust is easily created because they know there's a missing component to their life. Well, we're taking income, we're producing income through interest and dividends without touching principal. Most advisors are giving income to their retired clients. They're just using the withdrawal method. So we got a minute left in this segment. Tell us why the withdrawal magnet, the withdrawal method, I should say, is something that can't be trusted if you're retired or nearing retirement. Well, the, the, that's called the 4% rule, and it kind of went away after, two, after 2008. But if you're using a specific withdrawal requirement uh, and you're invested in stocks in the market, could be in long positions, you're putting your, your potential at risk, substantially your, your money's at risk, uh, because if, if the market drops, you're pulling out income, you're taking out more money. Uh, but it affects your net rate of return long term. Uh, and one bad market year completely ruins the party financially. So that, that's not an income strategy. That's a growth strategy, David. We need to take another break. We come back. I want to talk to you more about this concept, Jeff. So please stay with us. And you stay with us, too. We'll be right back here with more coming up in just a moment on the income generation. If you're near or in retirement, head over to the incomegeneration.com and download your special report written specifically for the needs of the income generation. Again, those be born before 1966. I'm David Scranton, and you've been watching The Income Generation. And welcome back to the Income Generation. We're here talking with Jeff Small, president of Arbor Financial Services in Melbourne, Florida, and brand ambassador for our very own retirement income store. 
Whew. So Jeff, the withdrawal method, the withdrawal method versus the income method. We talked about why the withdrawal method is so problematic for those of us that are part of the income generation. And, 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 but why is it that the income method is the method that you feel in your heart and soul can be trusted? Well, the income method is the correct position today because of the stage of the market cycle, the stage of the demographic cycle, the stage of all the all the cycles that affect the markets should point everybody towards income. But fortunately, Dave, to some of the points you said earlier, the retirement income store demystifies why you should have income versus why you should be accumulation centric and create income from being accumulation oriented. You can't have an income plan and be invested in the market or be long in the market or have exposure to risk. That doesn't work. It only works 50% of the time. And so if you look at the various market cycles, even a lay person can see, oh gee, that is incorrect. Fortunately though, the retirement income store demystifies that and solves that problem of clarity for a consumer to see the difference. And because a lot of these things are investing by contract, the income itself, it, with many of these things is actually consistent. It's, I wouldn't say it's insured, but it's assured. So people can feel confident that income is not gonna end. But why do I wanna keep my principal intact? Gee, Jeff, that sounds great that I can get, you know, all this income, but I don't wanna keep my principal intact. I wanna spend it down. I don't have children, I don't care about it. Tell our viewers why, that's, why they might just want to keep that principal intact for later years. Well, there, their perspective on money is going to change dramatically from age 60 to age 70, from age 70 to age 80. And at age 80, 65-year-old people say, you know what, Jeff, I don't want to have any money by the time I'm 85. And, that's the, and I tell them that's the worst mistake they could ever make because at 85, that's where they're going to need it. They're going to spend the most amount of money in their entire life in the last two years of their life on health care potentially. And so you want to have as much money in, as possible. But uh, to your earlier point, David, when we look at the accumulation side of the equation and we're creating income from the 4% rule, which a lot of your viewers will know, you know you're, you're standing of having, you're, you're putting yourself in a position where you're not going to have any money by utilizing that role uh, for, for money because you're cannibalizing the resource. You're not sustaining the enough earnings to withdraw what you're potentially consuming. And that doesn't work. It doesn't work mathematically at this stage at all. Yeah, and you could probably agree, but you know, most convalescent homes you've ever been in visiting others are a place that none of our viewers ever wants to live. So if you can't spend your own money to keep yourself with full-time home health care and the comforts of your home for your final years, well then, heck, what's money worth if you, if you can't do that and have that type of freedom? So Jeff, as usual, it's my pleasure. You're a great friend. It's so good to have you on the show. Thank you. And you stay with us. We'll be back here in a moment with more coming up on The Income Generation. I'd like to thank all of our guests for joining us today for another episode of The Income Generation. I'd also like to thank you, our new and returning viewers. As you know, if you've ever seen the show, the real goal in the game of Survivor is not just to survive, but to thrive. The ultimate goal for every contestant is to win. While life itself is not a game, we obviously all want to win at life as well. For most people, an important aspect of winning is the ability to enjoy retirement with a sense of freedom and financial security. Achieving that goal requires meticulous planning. And for most, it requires help not only from a qualified professional, but from the right qualified professional. That is a financial advisor you know you can trust to help you protect your hard-earned money and to create a strategy that provides reliable income to meet your needs and goals. That's how you can win at life. And the importance of trust in that equation cannot be overestimated, which is why it's so important to not let the overall erosion of trust in our society in recent years become a danger in your life. At the end of the day, there are still many areas of life in which trust is not only important, but essential to our ability to survive and to thrive winning at the game of life by achieving our ultimate goals. So rather than falling victim to mistrust, make it your mission to acknowledge those areas in your life where trust is necessary and to be more diligent than ever before about finding a professional you know you can trust to help you thrive. And finally, take advantage of resources designed to help you in your search. The right financial advisor for you and your situation is out there. 
and now finding him is just as easy as picking up the telephone. Thanks for watching. If you're close to retirement and you really want to know how to protect and maximize your money, it's essential that you stay informed and up to date. And as you know, right here is where you can do it on the Income Generation. I'm David Scranton, and we'll see you next week. Would you take your grandchildren out for ice cream and try to pay for it using your stock certificates? No, that would be ridiculous. Instead, you would use your income. So why then do so many retirees make one of the biggest financial mistakes, dipping into their savings instead of relying on income during retirement? The good news? It's completely avoidable. To learn more, visit the retirementincomestore.com. For behind the scenes photos, retirement planning tips, and upcoming giveaways, follow the Income Generation Show on Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch video clips, guest interviews, and to catch up on past episodes.